Okay, corporate junkie, let's get into this. Let's get into this video. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. At Corporate Junkie. This is for you, Corporate Junkie. Um, I don't like the way that you made me and my sister just vlogs video look like we were attacking our own people, okay? That was never our intent to attack our own sisters and brothers. Same thing goes for you, the Muhammad's. That was never our intent. What we was saying as is there are Americans coming over here being nasty, doing nasty things, and being bad to the locals. Now, let me flip the fucking script, okay? Let's talk about the fact that we get abused over here too. Y'all invited us to come home, which by the thousands we did. We came running to Ghana. People sold their homes, moved out of their apartments, sold everything. Some people packed up uh, containers and moved over here just to get over here and realize this is not our home. Y'all make us know in so many ways all the time that this is not our home. One, as you heard him, he called us foreigners. As far as you being pissed corporate junkie at the fact that she keeps calling us diasporans y'all call us that the Ghanaians call us that we didn't make that word up we didn't start calling ourselves that we don't know that that's what y'all call the white people and the Chinese because we're not around them but we know that that's what y'all call us I, I ain't never heard the word before Tabi till I came to Ghana okay y'all invite us home let's talk about what y'all do to us Starting from the fucking air, no, before we get to the airport, we got to have a visa that we pay for to even enter our home. We have to pay to enter our home. We get to the air, we pay all this money for passports and visas, COVID shots at the time to get here. And then we got to pay another $150 US dollars for another COVID test here in Ghana. That's Ghana doing that, not the US. That's y'all welcoming us home. We get to the airport, and as soon as you see a fucking blue passport, everybody's coming for us. Can you give me something small, small at the COVID place? You get to immigration. Can you give me something small, small? You get to baggage. Can you give me something small, small? A person grabbed a damn cart and put my bag on it and got mad because I gave him five U.S. dollars because I only had hundreds because you come over here with hundreds to get the best, you know, cash in rate. How about he looked at that and said, I don't want that. I said, what you mean you don't want it? He said, I said, what did you, I want to know, what did you expect me to give you? He said, $10. I said, so you want me to give you over a hundred CDs for picking up a bag, putting it in a cart? He don't know this is like my fifth time coming through the airport. Okay. Let's talk about the fact that only I've been to Canada, Mexico, and almost every state in the U.S. I have, and Ghana, I have never seen nowhere in any country or state where people have diff openly, it says um, $60 for foreigners, $30 for locals, okay? You go to Cocoon Park, and I don't remember the price. Let's say 200 for foreigners, because that's what y'all call us, uh, 40 for locals. You go to the castle, it's 60 for foreigners, 10 for locals. I ain't never seen that nowhere. I ain't never went nowhere in the U.S., Mexico, and Canada where it said you pay, if you a local, if you're from here, you pay um, $3 for a Coca-Cola. But if you're a foreigner, you pay $8 for a Coca-Cola. I ain't never seen that nowhere except Ghana. All the airports I've been to, even when I accidentally ended up on the continent of Asia, which is another story, I ain't never seen nobody rush me in the airport, harass me, nothing. Nobody in the airport has ever asked me for no money, for nothing. You, I've only, I ain't going to say you, I have only seen that in Ghana. Now let's talk about the fact that y'all welcomed us home and how this process looks to me. According to y'all, the ones that of us that were stolen, because first of all, we're not all from here. I don't care what you have been taught and what you have been told. All black and brown people are not from here, okay? So let's talk about the process of coming home. Me and my sister get stolen from our mother when we're six months, five years old, somebody kidnapped us. However it happened, we got stolen from our mother, our birth mother and father. 20 years later, 
we're probably 26 years old now. Our mother finds us and she said, baby, y'all come home. I miss you. Come back home. Get out them streets where they don't love you at and come home. So we drive, take a taxi, however we get to our mother's address, we get there. But before she let us come to the door, she says, oh, welcome home. But before you come in, can you pay me $300 to enter the door? That's the visa to come home. So, okay, we happy to be home. So we pay $300 to our mother to step foot in her house because we're excited to be home to the motherland, okay? We get in there and now it's dinner time. And she has plates on the table for the kids that grew up in the house. And she has a plate on the table for me and my sister who was stolen years ago. And she says, oh, my daughters, because you didn't grow up here, um, my children get to eat free that grew up here. But because you were stolen and you're just coming back, I have to charge you $20, $20 for a plate. So me and my sister, we're so happy to be home. We're confused. We pay her $20 for a plate. Okay. That's the cocoon shit. That's, that's y'all giving us different prices for shit. Okay. Now we're at our mother's house and we're enjoying being there. We see something's a little weird, but we enjoy being back home with our mother. We decide we want to stay. And she goes, oh, you want to stay a little longer? You're going to have to pay me $1,000 every year to stay here. That's the residency. Now we're paying her for residency, even though she invited us home after we were stolen from her. Okay. Now we want to we pay the residency and then we decide, you know what? We want to get on the birth certificate. We, we kind of like it here. It's a little weird, but we comfortable enough to stay here. And she tells us, oh, in order for you to stay here, I have to put you put my name on your birth certificate. That's going to be uh, $3,000 each, please. And then I will put you your name on the birth certificate and you will become a family member. That's the citizenship. That's the citizenship. So how are we home if we got to pay you? Why aren't the why aren't the visas free if this is home? Why don't you make this visa free for us? If this is home, why do we have to pay to be a resident? If this is home, why isn't our citizenship automatically given to us? Why did I have to pay in 2021 960 CDs for a green card, for a Ghana card? My husband didn't pay nothing. Now, I have heard locals in Accra said that they had to pay 240 CDs. Why was there a KEA office right across the street from my store, little down from my store, where the Ghanaians go to get their Ghana card? Oh, no, as an American, I had to drive, pay a taxi to take me three hours away to Takarati to get my Ghana card and pay 960 CDs for it. And to this day, I ain't never used it for nothing. What the fuck is it for? Because I ain't used my Ghana card not one time, not one time. So I'm just going to at corporate junkie, if I said your name right. Me and my sister finna get into this a little deeper. This was just a little introduction to how I feel about your reaction to our video. Now you did leave up. First of all, I'm not the older lady. My name is Kimberly. She clearly introduced me as Kimberly. Slow down and pay attention. Be respectful. It's, it, the, the thing about Ghana is stop crying victim. Stop crying victim. Cause y'all cheat us out of a lot of stuff. We move into houses. We pay th thousands of CDs to move into these houses just to get in there and find out seven of the plugs. Out of seven plugs, six of them don't work. Out of three bathrooms, only one toilet flushes. There's the roofs leaking. There's snakes everywhere. There's lizards all over the house. And then once the landlord gets your money, you don't see his ass no more. What you hear is, I'm coming. I'm coming. So let's talk about how y'all abuse us. Oh, and for the girl who said, I'm tired of you talking about trolls, I really want to follow you. I'm trying to get into your content, but I'm tired of you addressing trolls. What the fuck you should have did was went to the people trolling me and told them, why are you trolling this lady? If you don't like her page, get off of here. But no, you told you chose to turn into a troll. But I blocked you, so you probably won't see this message. Oh, no, you will, because you'll come in under another. As soon as you realize you're blocked, you'll come in under another page. Okay.
If you're tired of me talking about the trolls, what you should be tired of is people trolling me. Grown people trolling me, talking shit on my platform. That's what you should be tired of. Not the fact that I keep addressing it. I can address it however. I can keep addressing it as to, until I choose to stop. Okay, y'all stop punching me. I'm going to stop punching you. That's how the fight is going to end. Okay, so anyway, but you got blocked. So again, this, stop crying, victim Ghana. Stop acting like y'all perfect and y'all don't do nothing to us. You do. You do a lot to us. The year of the return was bullshit. It was a way. Okay, first of all, the man said that we come over here and we don't do nothing to develop Ghana, to develop the land. It's not our responsibility to come to your land because you make us know it's yours and develop your land. Now, it would be nice and some people have. Okay, let's talk about the fact that we come over here and buy land just to find out a year later some old ass elder come along and say, oh, it's our land. We want it back. The person that sold it to you wasn't supposed to sell it to you. Let's talk about that. Oh, but see, me and my sister are going to get into it all. So make a reaction to that video because you were wrong. And if I'm not mistaken, then you tried to throw it in Ghana's face. Americans didn't want to um, come to Nigeria. They didn't want to go to Nigeria. No, the fuck we didn't. We came to Ghana. Ghana welcomed us. But then you tried to throw it in Ghana's face like, ha, 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 Ghana. Y'all got all the Americans. Now look what happened. Again, though, Ghana, stop playing victim. Y'all know what y'all do. And y'all know we're speaking the truth. Y'all got people rocking around scared to speak the truth. Why? You say shit like, get out of our country. Oh, motherfucker, I am one step from getting the fuck out this country trust me and i know there's a lot of people here that genuinely do love me that's around me so i'm not talking about y'all okay respond to that because like i said me and my sister we're going to make another video and we're going to discuss this and you can feel free to make your reaction to her video or whatever you want to do but um i'm not sure if you're nigeria first of all i think you're nigerian and I'm not sure if you're living in the U.S., but if you are living in the U.S., what did you do to help develop anything in the U.S.? When you go to work every day, if you're working, what have you done to better the U.S.? Why you think it's our responsibility to come over here and better Ghana? Like we're supposed to come over here and develop a country that we have to pay to stay in. What You sound stupid that you expect us to come over here and to start developing land that we have to continuously pay to stay in if i don't renew my visa i gotta go or i have to live here illegally why because this is not my home people coming from canada canada is your home if you was born in the uk and raised there the uk is your home if you was born in the united states of america that is your home ghana's cool like I said, I've been here over three years. Nothing has happened to make me want to run away from here until now. And pretty much is social media. Social media gets to get to lets you see what people really think about you. It lets me see what the Ghanaians and the Nigeria and the Nigeria, what the fuck y'all got to say? Because I ain't in y'all country saying shit about y'all. What I talked about was what I do know is how y'all treat us when you get to the U.S. How about the Ghanaians came to the U.S. and started calling us you blacks? you blacks i was roommate in one i said why you keep calling us you blacks you the blackest person i ever met and i ain't had nothing against black people i love dark men he said that when he he first of all him and 200 other people were rescued from the sierra leone the from the blood diamond war the u.s came over here according to him and the few of them that i talked to that came the u.s came and rescued them got them visas, passports, made them fake birth certificates, whatever they had to do to get them on the plane, pay for their plane tickets, fed them. When they got to the U.S., they went to different states. The, one I, the ones I met went to Texas. They paid for them a two-bedroom apartment for six months, put a food stamp card in their hand that they didn't have to go to the welfare office and apply for, six months' worth of food stamps, Pay for their visas, all their shots, whatever they needed to come here, whatever. They came off the plane set and ready to go. The government has done that for who in America? You said people from Section 8 is coming over here. Shut your ass up. 
everybody coming over here ain't living off Section 8 and government money and all that shit. And if we are, so what? The people that do, they, they work for their fucking money. Okay, understand that. Okay, the boy told me, he said, the, he said, Kimberly, the reason why I say that is because that's what we were told. He said, before we came here, we had an orientation, a live, or I, th I heard now it's a video. He said, we had an orientation, and they told us in the orientation to be careful of black people. They're robbers, stealers, car thieves, they own drugs, they're lazy, they don't want to work. He said, they told us that. They told us not to look at white women because if you look at a white woman, you will go to jail. He said, so I was scared to look. He said, I saw a lot of white people and I wouldn't put my eye on them because they told us not to look at white people. So this is what they're teaching them coming across the border. That black people ain't shit. We lazy and we don't want nothing. But then y'all turn around and want us to come here. But when y'all get over there, y'all nasty to us. Y'all treat us like the Nigerians are very nasty to us. They treat us like shit. They come over there like they're the white people that don't like us and we ain't shit. I've witnessed this, seen it, worked with them. They've been my neighbors, dated one and all kind of shit. As far as the Ghanaians, I only had a problem with one Ghanaian person in the U.S. because I only met one. Ethiopians, I've met them. They, they pretty much keep to themselves. Haven't had a problem with them, but I've never, I was never friends with an Ethiopian. I just worked with them, and they would just pretty much do their work and mind their business. But the Ghanians and the Nigerians and the Liberians, I've had experience with them. The Liberian guy that was our roommate, he was pretty much to himself. He went to work every day like we did, and would come home and stay in his room. This was years ago, but still, I have experienced them. OK, out of the 200 that crossed the border that the U.S. brought over here from the Blood Diamond War, within two months, eight of them got deported. Why? They were out partying, getting drunk, being stupid, fighting, being disrespectful, and they got deported. So while you on here, um, I don't want your name, copycat junkie, some shit like that, whatever your name is, study your shit a little more. You left a whole part of the video out where I was describing how even black Americans had treated me being in Ghana. Not just how they treat Ghanaians, but I was, I'm, we're telling you our, ex me, and I ain't going to speak for just, I was speaking my experience, what I saw, and it was wrong. But that's not all Americans. A lot of Americans here bought a house in a corner somewhere and they minding their own damn business. Okay, I'm very kind to Ghanaians. I have, I have, okay, let me just get into this. I ain't b helped develop shit because I didn't come up here to help develop Ghana. I like the fact that the city I live in is undeveloped. That's what I love about it. I love that it's undeveloped. I chose not to live in Accra. I don't like it in Accra. I don't dislike Accra. I don't like it in Accra. I don't like being in Accra. Okay. Some of us come here just to settle and have our peace and our freedom. We don't come here to fight for rights and build the land and develop the land. We don't come here to do that. And it's, it's stupid and sad for you to expect us because what you're saying is y'all want us to come here for our money. That's what that's what my ears are hearing. Because what have you developed in, in America? What recreation center have you built in America? What new daycare center have you built in America? What homeless person have you picked up off the ground and offered them and paid for them a house to live in in America? What have you done since you've been over there? Now, like I said, I'm not attacking Ghanaians, Nigerians, nobody. I'm speaking my truth, my experience. And the first one of y'all to come for me is getting blocked because y'all going to come. But you're going to get blocked. I don't even know if I'm going to respond to you. I'm just going to go ahead and block your first, second and third page that you come on because you're going to keep coming back. Um, like I said, the best thing for you to do, and then y'all talk about, I keep talking about trolls. Here we go with the trolls again. Like I said, stop fucking with me. You said, fuck you. No, don't fuck me. Fuck with me is what you need to do. Okay. This is the stuff I have to wake up and read on my pages and my comments. Fuck you. No, bitch, come fuck with me. That's what you can, that's the best thing you can do. The little Aunt Jemima chick out there in the cry, girl, shut your ass up. You made a threat, and the threat was that I'm going to have to see you one day. Okay, I, I might. Anyway, I love y'all. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I love y'all. I love Ghana, but Ghana is getting to the point. I mean, no, P 
people, the Ghanaians, the Nigerians, on this social media, it is getting to the and 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 me going out into the public. I go out to buy things, and the women are real nasty to me. You know how many Ghanaians owe me money? Kimberly, can you loan me this and I'll give it back? You, I can name six women right now that have been owing me money since 2021, all the way since 2021. Walk past me every day like they don't owe me a penny. Okay? One had the nerve to ask me to loan her some more money. I thought that was funny as hell. And I politely said no. Okay, so we're not the only ones causing problems over here. We packed up to come to what we thought was home to get here and find out this is not home for a lot of us. I didn't say all, oh, listen, this is not home for some of us. And like I said, y'all let us know every day in some kind of way that Ghana is not our home. And I'm sure that's probably a lot of countries on this continent, but I can only speak on Ghana. I can speak on Gambia because I have sisters there um, that has told me their experiences. And for y'all that has never been here before, shut the fuck up because you don't know. Those of y'all that's just listening and on here talking shit, but you ain't never stepped foot on this continent, shut the fuck up because you don't know shit about living on this continent. If you came to visit for 10 days and you got something negative to say about what I'm going through, you too, shut the fuck up because it's different to be a visitor here for 10 days and to actually fucking live here. Okay, y'all stay blessed. I love y'all. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. You will hear from me and my sister soon. Um, the lady said, and I don't know if she said continent, Ghana, or Africa, but she said that <clears throat> all she ever see complaining is black Americans, that we complain about. We're the only ones over here that complain, that <clears throat> the Chinese don't complain, the white people don't complain, the Indians don't complain. No, they probably don't complain. I don't know I'm not around them, but clearly you are, and you probably not. You said they don't complain. They don't complain because y'all treat them different from us. Y'all treat them different from us. As far as the Chinese, what they going to complain about? They over here trying to take over Africa. All of Africa, probably. They, what they going to complain about? They live in their own little community somewhere, but they're over here trying to buy every damn thing they can, giving y'all all kind of loans and shit. Y'all owe them all kind of money. So what they going to complain about? Y'all hand is in their mouth. So no, they're not complaining. They're strategically trying to steal Ghana. We are complaining because y'all give us shit to complain about. Y'all treat us different from the Chinese and all them people. Not a damn. See, I'm in Ghana. It's that quick, the lights is out. Hold on. Let me get my little emergency light somewhere around here. Anyway, here's the deal. Y'all telling us going to go back to America. A lot of Americans have got the fuck out of here. They already gone. Americans are leaving here just like we came by the thousands. We are motherfucking leaving by the thousands because we are not welcome here. We don't feel welcome here. And um, this is not home. Everybody did not come from here. So for y'all say go back home, we are going back home. I'm one motherfucking step from getting the fuck out of here. And I fell in love with Ghana. I really, really did. But I hate the fact that I go out and I try to buy fabric or food or anything. And some people looking at me nasty, face all scrunched up and shit. Motherfucker, I'm finna give you some money. Can you just sell me what, can you say hello, good morning, welcome, and give me some eye contact or any fucking thing? No, this is how y'all treat us. But y'all want to act like y'all the motherfucking victims all the time. How about I go into a meat store one day? And the man damn near cussed me out because pre he pretty much got mad because I didn't want to buy his goat meat. I don't eat goat meat. I came there for beef to get a piece of beef and ground my beef and get some oxtails. But because I didn't know what the, the I didn't know the oxtail was the cow's tail, I asked for the foot for the cow's leg and it didn't look right and I said no. But this man was very disrespectful to me for no fucking reason. I didn't do shit to him, wasn't saying to shit to him. I wasn't minding none of his business. You got mad because I wouldn't buy your motherfucking goat. I didn't come there to buy goat. So y'all pay attention to how y'all treat us while y'all talking shit about what the fuck we do when we come here and we ain't developing y'all fucked up ass land, but y'all go to the U.S. and spend y'all money and keep it to yourself, send it back home. Y'all don't do shit for America. Y'all get over there. Y'all get black American women to get y'all over there and then you fuck around and leave them. You got a whole wife over here or you'll get over there and leave your black American and marry and marry a white American or marry another black American 
because all y'all doing is scamming and using us. Stop acting like y'all love us and we're the ones that's wrong and we're the ones that's bad. Yeah, we were speaking on the couple that the few people we have seen and we have every fucking right to speak on our experience and what we have seen. But that ain't what my channel is about. My channel was about letting you see the good, bad and the ugly about Ghana. I opened my whole world up to y'all until y'all became trolls. So think about that, okay? Make a reaction to that shit. We don't give a shit, but you a content creator. That's what you are. Uh, what you, What's your name? Copy, cap, copycat junkie, some shit like that. You are a content creator. And what you did was you used my sister's video as a means to create more content. I ain't mad at you about that. I'm mad at you about the other shit you said. How you tried to make us look like we were trying to talk down on our sisters. You upset at the fact that she used the word diaspora. What what word is she supposed to use? Y'all call us foreigners. After you told us to come home. Shut the fuck up. Now let me get back to the people that came from... The people that the U.S. rescued from the Blood Diamond War. The one Ghanaian that I roommate it with and the Liberian that I roommate it with. When the U.S. paid for them to come over here and gave them the two-bedroom apartments and the food stamps and even took them to the car lot and, and got him a car. He said he didn't know how to drive. He had never been in a car, but they walked into a car lot and told him to pick any car he wanted. He took the car for two days and had somebody drive it back because he didn't know how to drive a car and, he, and they did want him to pay the car notes. Now, the other thing was they gave them other other benefits. If they stayed one year, good in Ghana and good in the U.S., the U.S. paid for them to go to college, their full tuition. This guy didn't go to college, but a few of them did because I knew them. They did go to college. Um, one, one, I don't know if he died before he graduated, but he got sick and died. He was from Kenya. Now, the U.S. told them to stay one year. If they got married in one year, the U.S. would buy them a home for the size of their family. I said, why didn't you get a home? Because he had, at this point, he had been in the U.S. four years. I said, why didn't you get a home? Because Joseph got a home and the other couple of people got a home. I don't remember their names. I just remember the one in Joseph. And that he was in, he was somewhere on the East Coast. The U.S. took him somewhere on the East Coast. He said, because I had to get married within a year for them to um, buy me a house and I didn't get married in a year so I said well what if you get married now he said that it's over like the program the program's rules was that we have to get married within a year now in one year they had to start paying the U.S. back for everything the plane ticket the apartment every I don't know what all they had to play back for but I know for, for sure the plane tickets and the process of getting them here they had to pay the U.S. back. $35, they, after one year, they had to start paying the U.S. back $35 a month. He said, I ain't giving the U.S. shit back. Fuck the U.S. government. And I remember, look, we were sitting in the car because I took him to go get, he had to go get a shot or something that was required for him to stay in the U.S. And I said, why would you not pay the U.S. back $35 a month? He said, they ain't going to never get that money from me. Well, they ended up getting their money from him because he was going to be deported. The U.S. wasn't playing with him. They came and saved you from the blood diamond war and gave you a better life. And you got the nerve to say you're not paying them their money back? 35 U.S. dollars a month for all that they did for you? That's how they think about the, us. Not all, but some of them, that's how they think about us. And that's how they treated us. How how dare you get rescued and go over there and be nasty to black Americans, calling us you blacks and black people and telling us we lazy and you ain't paying the government back shit. Well, he, he anyway, rest his soul, he died. He died about four months ago. They found him dead and uh, he ended up moving from uh, Reno to Atlanta. And they found him dead in his car. They believe that he he had ended up getting on crack and coke and drugs. They think he probably um, just died in his car from a drug overdose or something. Um, but yeah, 
So, like I said, stop playing victim. Stop stop acting like Americans is the problem. When y'all got y'all own issues, y'all don't take care of y'all own people. Y'all won't give a person a fucking bag of water if they thirsty. You won't give them a piece of bread if they hungry. Meantime, y'all are the ones that told me not to eat people's food, not to tell nobody today I'm flying out. Y'all tell me all this stuff. And when I turn around and share with my people before they come here, y'all want to come on here and troll me and talk shit about me. Well, I've gotten to the use of the shit talking, like I said, but um, yeah, I just want to add that in how this man treated the American government after they saved his life from the Blood Diamond War. He wasn't paying a U.S. shit back, 35 U.S. dollars. Where can you go get a free loan from anything, airplane, plane ticket, rental, anything, and the U.S. said you have one year to deal with this and you just pay us $35 a month and you're fine. Where has that ever happened to a U.S. citizen? I mean, let me know. And I know some of y'all going to get on here and lie and say, oh, yeah, I did. No, you a damn lie. The U.S. don't give a shit about us. I don't give a damn what color you are. Black, white, green, blue. I don't think the U.S. has ever done that for anybody. Okay, continuing on. Since 2021, I have met, I've met a few women here that's been very nice to me. It's pretty much the women in the market that's not nice to me or when I go out shopping. But I have met one, two, three, four, I think, let me see, one, two, three, maybe four women in my life that's very close to me that have always been nice to me. Very loving, very kind, very generous. I had one lady when I went to the hospital when I was dying. She came, she left her job at One Africa and met me and my husband. She he, she told my husband, get her to the hospital right now. I'll meet y'all there. She stayed there from the time I got there to the time to to the time they released me. And I appreciate her for that. The grandmother has never, she has always been nice to me, never asked me or needed for me for anything. Now, the lady at the hotel, I won't name the hotel because I don't wanna, I don't want y'all trolling her and fucking around with her. I went to stay at one hotel and I fell in love with the hotel. The room was nice. They had hot water, shower, bathtub, refrigerator, little dining room, ta little like table with two chairs, air conditioning, everything that I needed. That lady was very, very nice to me. Very, very nice to me. But because I smoked cigarettes, she moved me from the inside room to this bigger outside room that was separate from the hotel. And I was cool with that. I wasn't at first because I was uncomfortable being separated from the hotel, but I ended up getting used to it. But that lady was so nice to me, so loving. She never asked me for anything. I remember being on live one day and I just out of nowhere started vomiting all on the live. I was just vomiting, oh, profusely vomiting while I was on TikTok live. And so I opened my door and ran out to ask her, could she please give me I had a sheet wrapped around me. Well, I had, I don't remember, whatever I had on, I could have had on something like this and I wrapped the sheet around me because I didn't want to go out there inappropriate in front of her husband. So I asked her, I said, oh my God, can you please give me a mop or some paper towel or something? I just, I'm, I just vomited all over the floor. She jumped up, came in there and looked. She said, ah, oh my God, hold on. She came in and started cleaning it up. And I said, no, 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 no. I'll clean it up. It's my vomit. I just needed something to clean it up with. She said, no, this is my job. Sit down, relax. I'll do it. She, after she finished, she was like, are you okay? Do you need anything? And I said, no. So I went to give her 20 CDs because all I had on me, t cash was 20 CDs. I, the rest of my money was on mobile money. She refused to take it. She said, again, this is my job. I can't take your money. One day, um, I took a shower. They don't have a shower curtain, so shower water get everywhere. So uh, my husband went to go get the mop, and then the dress I took off got wet from the shower as well. So my husband went out there to ask the man to give, to ask either one of them for the mop. And the husband came in with the mop. And so my husband was trying to get the mop, and he was like, no, 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 no. He went in there and mopped it up. And he saw my wet dress and he took the dress and said, I'm going to go wash it. We have a washing machine. So it didn't charge us a penny. Now, when, when she came and told me, she said, we have a washer. Um, if you ever need to wash clothes, 
just let me know. You just have to buy your own washing powder. So I went and bought washing powder, went out there. She showed me how to use the washer because it's different from a U.S. washer. You wash on one side and then you take the clothes out and put them on another side and it, rent, it spins the clothes to get the water out. So I put my clothes in the wash, went in the room and next thing I know, I went back to go check on the clothes so I could hang them up. She had already hung them up. I was like, okay, thank you so much. Let me know when they're dry and I'll come get them. Cause I had to go through her little house area to get them. Next thing I know, the next day, we and my husband leave to go to just open up the store. We come back, our clothes are folded, iron folded up and sitting on the ironing board. So I went to go pay her and she refused to take my money. Like she flat out refused. She is the only person in Ghana that refused to take money out of my hand. And I love her for it. I can't remember her name. Not that I would mention her name. Like I won't mention her hotel because I don't want y'all going for her. But um, if she see this video, she'll know who I am. Uh, me and my husband stayed there. He had his bike and it was her, her husband. She had a little daughter, like about a year old. But she was very sweet to us. They were very, very kind and loving to us. And if all else fails, I will most definitely go back to her hotel. The only thing I didn't like about the hotel was that when I went to, when I would do my TikTok lives, there was no view. It was like just dirt. There was no beautiful view like most of the places I set up at. But other than that, I loved the hotel and I love how they treated us. Anything we needed, they got it. They gave it to us. They found it for us. Whatever they had to do, they made sure we were happy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end this and get ready to post this video. I might post it as one video or two parts.